Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Mr. William Cowper said these few words, but they mean so much. Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America on a Monday. Look at all these sevens. Seven, seventeen, seventeen. Good morning. Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm Zeb Bell, Zeb at the ranch on a Monday, as I said, seven seventeen seventeen, and welcome to our program, brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, and of course, some of our great advertisers like Western Waste Services, always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969. Now, without any more, let's go right to the phone line and have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very well done, my friend. Call back later. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much, Keith. Appreciate it. Well done. Great job. Right now, it's time for the weather, and the weather brought to you by K&R Rental. They get there early in the morning. Like 7 o'clock, they open the doors at K&R Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Number to call is 678-3122. And they have all your tools, all your equipment from forklifts to lawnmowers. I'm telling you, it's all there. There. Had a nice visit with Roger the other day on the program. They are really good folks that have been in business since 1979. All the experience, all the great tools and equipment at K&R Rental. Right now, here's Gina with the weather. Well, it's time for us to saddle up and ride again for another work week. And as far as weather is concerned, this is what we can expect. It's going to be nice for today. Sunny skies, a little bit on the breezy side, nothing that we're not used to. Winds out of the west, 10 to 15 miles an hour. High of 89 for today. Sunset for tonight is going to be right around 9.09. Clear skies for this evening, low of 54. Tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 93 with an overnight low of 56. And expect the same as we hit midweek on Wednesday, sunny and 93. That is your weather for Appreciate it, Gina. Thank you. And everybody, thank our good friends for the weather. KNR Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Number to call, 678-3122. Oh, and they're a Honda engine dealer, too. And they got all the parts you might need for wheel lines at KNR Rental. Holy cow, we got a busy... You know what, Deanne, my lovely bride, went through uh, what today is as far as all the different... Uh, Highlights for today on the calendar. I found out today is World Emoji Day. Okay, big deal. Secondarily, it is National Get Out of the Doghouse Day. I'm saving this one. And then it's also Wrong Way Corrigan Day. Hmm. And it is National Peach Ice Cream Day. Oh, that sounds good. And this one, I have no idea. Somebody's got to tell me. It is National Yellow Pig Day. National Yellow Pig Day. All right, there you have it. That's uh, 
the highlights for 7 17 17. Hey, don't forget our friends at Daryl's Cleaners, and they're located at 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. You know, they do so much as service to you. I mean, you know that they are the best in dry cleaning, you know that your clothes are going to last longer. And what you didn't maybe know is that they will also, because maybe you just don't have time, you got a busy, hectic week, you don't have time to wash, dry, fold, and iron all your clothes, they can, they will, and they do, okay? All you have to do is just get in there and see them today. Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. My friends, you stop in and see them today. By the way, too, I really want to say a big thank you to Ramsey Heating and Electric, as I almost choked to death here on that bagel three hours ago. Anyway, Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Mm-hmm. 6780459. It looks like it's going to be a warm week all week with highs into the lower 90s. And why sit there and sweat? Why look at the ink run across your pad on your wrist and everywhere else? Get cool. Make sure that you've got air conditioning filters to make sure the air conditioner works efficiently. They've got them all at Ramsey Heating and Electric 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. Some of our birthday wishes for today include Bruce Ford. Hello, Mr. Ford. How are you? There is a man that is just so nice, and he is so great to other people and believes in helping and saying something nice to everybody. I just really enjoy him. Happy birthday. And Larry Matison in uh, Twin Falls. God bless you, Larry. A good, good guy. Both of them are celebrating their birthday today. And I still go back to what in the heck is National Yellow Pig Day? Somebody's got to call me on that one. I haven't got a clue. Number to call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Give me a jingle on the landline. At 831, we're going to be giving away some cookies from Sophie's Chatterbox, so stay tuned for that. Right now, I'd like to remind you, too, about Denny's Restaurant at 611 North Overland and Burley and 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls. Now, we are going to be over there this Thursday for Lunch Bunch at 11.30. That's right, at Denny's Restaurant. And our thanks go out for the gift certificates, Smith's Food, Handsome Mortuary, Stokes, uh, Doug Martin with his redneck cup holders. Oh, I'm telling you, we have a lot of fun. Well, you're going to enjoy all the food, too. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner anytime, all the time at America's Diner. And that's, of course, Denny's Restaurant. 611 North Overland and Burley and our Zeb's Lunch Bunch. We will be there this Thursday at 11.30 a.m. I, I remember during the winter months, I kept saying, we will be there, and we had to hold, what was it, three or four times, Deanne. How many times did we have to cancel and reset just purely because of the snow and the ice on the highway? It was a little treacherous. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I want to talk about the in- absolute insanity that is going on not only nationwide in other people's backyards, but also even here. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, and your calls are welcome. Don't forget Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Oh, my goodness, they help you get back to being you. Don't forget to check out all the great services, all the exercise, all the sports medicine. All, of course, they got the only hydrotherapy pool in the area. Oh, these people are good. All the physical therapists, they are phenomenal. You stop in and see them today. Call, make an appointment, and they can help you get back to being you. Six seven eight one one nine one. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. My lovely bride has just supplied me with the information wanted. Yellow Pig Day originated in the 1960s when two math students from Princeton spent a long time obsessively analyzing, 
analyzing, or however this word is spelled wrong, the number 17. In their analysis, it seems they went a little mad eventually and decided to invent the concept of a yellow pig with 17 toes, 17 teeth, and so forth. Now, Yellow Pig Day is an important part of the academic calendar and celebrated with cake, singing of songs, parades, and general revelry. How many of you, prior to me saying this earlier this morning, were even aware of a yellow pig day? I hadn't heard of this ever. <laughs> Give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Uh, we're going to, again, like I said, start talking about the lying and the insanity that's going on. But I, first of all, want to remind you about our friends over at Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. The number to call, 436-3200, the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicasha area. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful patio and backyard where they hold barbecues through the summer, and they make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best place. They're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, 924 Christian Way in Rupert. Number to call, 436-3200. we got to stop this, and I'm not sure how. We've got to stop the lying We have got to stop the knuckle-dragging. We have got to stop the insanity and get to work for us. I don't care either side of the aisle. Republicans, Democrats, Independents, I don't care who's involved in this. Everyone in the House, everyone in the Senate need to get off their high horse for possible news clips on the 6 o'clock news and get to work for us. I think we all should send our representatives, Simpson, Labrador, Senators, Rish, Crapo, letters, and say to them, look, just get to work for the American people. Pass this memo on to the rest of your constituents back there in the Senate and the House. Tell them to be a leader about this. Tell them it's time to get to work. The Republicans have control of the House. They have control of the Senate. They have the Oval Office. Now, for Pete's sakes, would you get up off your dead butts and go to work and do something? There is so much to get accomplished. <coughs> Excuse me. With all the work on health care, if, and I'm not sure the government should even be involved in this, the health care, the budget, getting the job done on Islam and erasing it from the face of the earth with ISIS, the wars against us, national security, they've got plenty to do. Caller, you're on the air. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Zeb. You're absolutely right. The problem is the Democrats have become a party of obstructionists, and they should be charged with... uh, Obstruction of justice, don't you think? No, I'm going to tell you something, Keith. I, I'm not even going to make this a partisan issue. Caller number two, stand by. Don't hang up. Uh, Keith, I don't care if they've got an R back of their name or a D back of their name. I, I don't care if it's Republican or Democrat. I'm issuing a challenge to all of us to send memos to our constituency, which is all Republican, and tell them to lead the charge and get to work. The Republicans are as guilty of not doing anything. They're as guilty of being knuckle-draggers as the Democrats are, I couldn't care less about the obstructionist attitude by the Democrats. Step over them and get the job done. Well, you know, the problem is, I haven't heard a word from Rich or Crapo or Mike Simpson. Imagine that. Or even Labrador. That's how they really feel and what they're doing. Well... Shouldn't they answer to us, the people who put them where they're at? And don't think for five minutes, my dear friend, that they are not with an open door policy on this program. They are. They can call in. They can be a part of it to advise their constituency what they're doing anytime they want. I'll rearrange the schedule. I am sick and tired of chasing parked cars. These people need to get their 
you know what's in gear and start answering the questions that are out there in the hinterland. Well, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether you're uh, betting in a card game or you're playing marbles. As long as everybody plays fair, things will turn out okay. But there's always someone or some party who wants to, you know, even though things are going good, they want it to obstruct. Yeah. Uh, Keith. That's, that's the whole purpose of the Democratic Party, and I think they put it just pretty clearly that they're going to do everything they can to keep Trump from doing anything. No, that was the whole gist of these idiots, and that's what they are, going out on these anti-Trump protests all across the nation this weekend. We're going to resist. We're going to fight everything. Oh, yeah, and you're going to bring America down, you jerks. Hey, Keith, i got to run. Thank you. God bless you, man. Thanks so much. All right, caller number two, I'll be there momentarily. Stand by. Ag Express is looking for drivers. Call Dale and Paul at 438-8886. Allen in Twin Falls at 731-2495. Chad and Burley at 670-7219. They're looking for drivers, full and part-time positions, and retired folks are welcome to call with an application. Whatever works best for you, your home every night, and vacation schedules, benefit programs, including 401k plan. Hey, Ag Express is looking for drivers. Ag Express is looking for you. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zeb. Hello, you buddy. Have the right to be uh, cranked up this morning. <clears throat> it's one city after another is coming under siege by these unruly blocks. Now, it's going to take both parties to get together, put their heads together, and put a stop to what's going on. Otherwise, we're not going to have any cities left. There's going to be more crime. The police are going to be overwhelmed. And what are these fat cat uh, brown leather shoe, uh, black leather shoe people running around uh, in Washington besides looking like a bunch of glory boys on on TV? Like Ryan, he's always smiling like like a possum up there. And he's doing nothing. McConnell's doing nothing. People on the other side of the aisle are doing nothing. Our cities are going to start burning if something isn't done. We are looking at mob rule anarchy. We are looking at young people and even middle-aged people that absolutely don't know the meaning of socialism. They don't know the meaning of communism. I was appalled this weekend, Tony, when I watched a video of uh, people going on to various college campuses and asking the so-called students of higher learning, why are you supporting socialism? What do you think of socialism, or what does it mean? And they had a blank, stupid look fall over their face. They don't know. These kids are so absolutely entrenched in leftism, thanks to the professors and others that lead these absolute destitute of any uh, American thought universities. It's pathetic, and it's leading us to the road of ruin. Well, is it going to take another Kent State to get this thing straightened out? We're going to have to go down that road? I hope not, but I'm telling you what right now, after listening to some of these stupid kids that are paying upwards of maybe sixty-five, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year for tuition to get the higher learning, they're dumber than a rock. Why are we allowing these left-wing communists to take over our educational system and program our kids to turn against the American citizens that just want to be free and run this country like it should be run. I can't answer that question. It goes back many, many years of the George Soros types that wanted to subvert and absolutely overthrow this country, Tony, and it's getting worse every day. Hey, God bless you and Mary. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, buddy. Thank you. Well, there's a question. Why are we? I can't answer that. And we've got, you know, there's people right here in the Magic Valley that absolutely do not think before they speak or not think before they write a letter. And uh, I was reading a letter in the paper, Why Can't the President Stop Lying by Suhar over to Buell? 
evidently forgetting that her uh, golden child, Obama, lied about Fast and Furious, and you can keep your doctor, and many other stories I could throw back at her if time permitted this morning, but I don't understand the thought. And then there was another letter by Dave Davis and Kimberly about uh, wanting to have single-payer health insurance. Dave, please sit down, have a cup of coffee, or perhaps a, a little aspirin. You'll feel better, maybe think better. That's the dumbest letter I've ever read and saw in the newspaper for a long time. It's things like this that bother me, and they should you too as Americans that want to see this country grow and get better. Uh, I know somebody that's growing and getting better because they're having a ripping good time up at Oakley, and uh, the merchants up there invite you to come on up to Oakley for Pioneer Days all this week. You better believe it. Clark's for shopping at 100 East Main Street in Oakley. Oh, the hometown grocery store. Famous breakfast sausage from Grandma's Recipe in bulk patties or links. Mmm, mmm. I'm telling you what makes my mouth drool. It is excellent. Stop in to Clark's for Shopping, and believe me, these are people that really care about their history and about their future. Along with Oakley Valley Stone at 204 West Main Street in Oakley, wishing the people of Oakley and everybody else a great 130-year anniversary of Oakley Pioneer Days. Man, they're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to tell you about it in just a minute, but don't forget for all your fireplace stone, headstone, for a loved one, landscaping boulders, all of this and more. Oakley Valley Stone, 204 West Main Street in Oakley. Okie dokie, here we go. I'll give you a little rundown of what's going to happen as far as the events up in Oakley this week. Uh, tomorrow night, they're going to have a big team rope and starting at 6.30, sign up, rope at 7. Thursday night at Jim Canna. Friday and Saturday, the open rodeo co-sanctioned with the IMPRA. And then fireworks and then dancing. Oh, oh my. And then on the 22nd, don't forget that huge Pioneer Day Parade at 11.30 in the morning. All of this and so much more at Oakley Pioneer Days. This week, don't you miss it. Absolutely. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. I think I'm going to give away right now a dozen delicious cookies. And they are from our dear friends at Sophie's Chatterbox at 530 E Street in Rupert. What a bakery, what a restaurant, and what nice people. You're going to love everything over at Sophie's Chatterbox. Now, here's the question, and it's for first-time winners only. Remember that. On the old I Love Lucy television series, you know, Ricky and Lucy and Fred and Ethel, what was the job that Fred Mertz had? What job did Fred Mertz do on the old I Love Lucy TV series? Quickly, quickly, quickly. That's the key word this morning because I'm really, really busy. Uh, give me a call at 436-224-1866-927-4587. What job did Fred Mertz on the I Love Lucy TV show, what did he do for a living? What was his job? Quickly, give me a call. Uh, that's quick enough. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Landlord? Uh, yeah, I'll accept that. Who is this? Gary Shoresman. Uh, you old cookie lover, you. Shoresman, you want him, but I'm going to make a little bit of a rule here. Uh, you have to make sure that they're sugar cookies, just plain sugar cookies, and then you have to split them with me. All right. When do you want to meet? <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy your cookies. Yes, he was an apartment landlord manager. That's exactly right. And uh, thanks, Gary Short. Jesse and Lucy's landlord. Yep, that's why they were always spending time going back and forth to each other's apartments. And uh, Fred uh, didn't do a whole lot for the rest of the people in the building, I'll tell you that. But he sure could tell old uh, 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 Ethel where to go. 
sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Gary. I appreciate it. God bless you, man. Sophie's Chatterbox at 530 E Street in Rupert, right on the square. And the answer is correct. He was a manager of the apartment house, a landlord. And uh, he managed everything with Lucy and Ricky. Okay. Calls are welcome. 436-224-1866-927-4587. By the way, on Thursdays, uh, we've got another week left of our good friend, Tony McCammon, with the University of Idaho Horticulture Department at 915 on Thursday. This guy is so sharp about everything. I mean, when it comes to bugs and, and all kinds of bad things and good things and what's good in the environment, what's helping the environment, he knows. He knows. So be sure and tune in on 9.15 on Thursday for It's Time to Grow with Tony McCammon from the University of Idaho Horticulture Department. Uh, Let's see what else have we got. I was talking about students a minute ago. College and university students, many of them, are so naive, and yes, I'm going to say this, so stupid when asked about what socialism is and why they want it. And in front of the TV cameras, when they put the microphone in front of their face and ask them this question, they go, uh, uh, well, there's uh, many other reasons, or uh, there's many facets to this answer. They couldn't give an answer. And 45%, this is what's spooky, 45% of these goofballs, they want socialism. Do you want government to decide how much and by who? Do you want absolutely every business to be paralyzed by government and you can't do anything because the government controls or your career is going to be controlled by government? And everybody gets the same. Everybody is the same. I mean, that is nothing more than a communist utopia. And that's what these kids don't understand. I don't know. You're going to have to help me on this one. Is it because the younger generation, and I'm not saying all of them, because, man, there are some tremendous goal-setting, career-heading people in this area, young people that I've featured on this program that are extremely sharp, and they've got their heads on straight. But many, when you start talking about 45% of these kids, they absolutely don't understand what's happened in this country. Capitalism is still the best way to go. Free enterprise, still the best way to go. Every other society, if you want a mess like Europe, then bring it in here. That's what Obama was trying to achieve. What are your thoughts on this? Give me a call, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. I just uh, I was reading this letter by this guy by the name of Dave Davis and Kimberly and and I really uh, he wants single payer insurance and he said he said the insurance companies do not exist. Uh, well, we, let me read this quote from uh, the paragraph that uh, really makes no sense to me whatsoever. Recently, the California Nurses Association proposed a statewide single payer system that was narrowly voted down in Sacramento. We need a nonprofit system that is fair to all of our citizens, but which will give fair profits to doctors and hospitals. Most of these people that don't really understand anything about single-payer insurance fail to realize it would absolutely be a death knell for people wanting to get in medicine. It would be a death knell for people and businesses to contribute to research for medicine. It would be a death knell for uh, people all being the same. Well, we'll try to get you, even though you're dying from this malignancy, we'll try to get you in, etc. They don't understand the pitfalls and, quite frankly, the pratfalls of single-payer insurance. That's why when I read letters like this for people that have unknowledgeable opinions, it makes me furious. 436-224-1866-927-4587. Don't weaken on me. Give me a call. 
In just a moment, we're going to talk about some of the craziness that's going on in our news today. I've got three stories I can't wait to share with you, so stand by with that. Barry Equipment and Rental, they've got three locations, South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. They have all the equipment to get the job done right. Absolutely. And right now, boy, I still got to get over there. Uh, They've got the Bobcat Excavators, new and used excavators for sale or rent. And they're saying, hey, we've got all shapes and sizes, and they can get the job done for you. Just And if you don't know how to run them, don't worry about it, because they got a sandbox out behind. They'll teach you. That's at Barry Equipment and Rental, South Lincoln and Jerome, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Deb. Um, I think that when a lot of the younger generation hears the word socialism, they've been studying social studies and they've been studying, oh, you know, social. That must mean something where we have fun, we get along, um, everything's cool. And I don't think that they've been in reading their dictionaries. And I'm wondering where the history books are standing in all of this. Because I think they're doing, they, they, us, whoever the people are that are deciding on what the kids are learning, I think they have tried to leave out a lot of the things in our history that are not very fun or very exciting. They were tough times. And, you know, we just can't raise these little snowflakes on reality. Chris, I'm going to say this, and you can tear it apart and think I'm wrong. Tell me. I think it goes deeper than that because it's a no-competition society. Everybody's a winner, and they think everybody's the same, and they think everybody should be given something. They're too doggone lazy many of them, to get out of bed in the morning and have a job, have responsibility, raise a family, have career goals, and try to excel with the talents God's given them. That's the problem with the younger generation. And I'm not saying all, because that would absolutely be false, but many, 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 to the tune of maybe 45 or even close to 50%, I believe absolutely are stupid because that's what they've been taught. Well, you know, I I hate to say this because... I was so fortunate that I grew up in a family that we all ate breakfast together, and we ate breakfast together with our kids. And at least four or five minutes, maybe ten even, we had some conversation, and we talked about things that are important, and we talked about things that we heard about that was going on in school. Yep. Okay, are you in, in that? I think it's so sad that a lot of kids don't even have breakfast. They have to go to school to have their breakfast. People are not sitting around the table and sharing their day's activities and their ideas and their expectations. So many people are not going to church where there is some kind of rules and regulations. And I think that if we don't turn this engine around, we are on the downward spiral because if you don't start impacting your children when they're three and four. It's kind of hard to do it when they're 23 and 24. They don't have a respect for the flag. They want to replace our national anthem. They don't want to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. They want it taken and thrown away. I mean, all the things, and this makes me bitter, and it should you too. All the things that my dad, my uncles, my buddies in Vietnam, all of them that fought and put their lives on the line, and these kooky kids that have the IQ quotient of a box of sticks, they want to change it and throw it away? No, we need to fight for it. Well, we do. And the sad thing is that um, I have a feeling that you had some relationship or knew somebody or maybe was related to somebody that was in the Vietnam War Absolutely. And the Korean War and the Second World War. And all of those people come back with a whole different philosophy than those of us that have everything handed to us and from the time we're born until we die. And, and it's just the, the kids in school are so far removed from reality 
and a lot of their teachers are so young. Yeah. They don't understand it. Chris, I always, honest, I mean this, look forward to your viewpoint. Thank you for your call, and have a blessed day. Thank you so much. Oh, I will. It's sunny outside. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Hey, caller, I'll be right there. Don't go away. The Lincoln County Fair is this week, and their theme from Pioneer Days to Modern Ways. Oh, my goodness. They're going to have a ripping good time. They're going to have junior rodeos, and they're going to have tractor pulling. They're going to have all kinds of fun i am pra rodeo and we're going to be talking later on this morning with chris taper up there at lincoln county and he's going to be telling us all about a great country county fair that's what it is i just absolutely love this fair because it is really the ideal of a country county fair lincoln county fair and rodeo and it's from pioneer days to modern ways all this next week the 22nd through the 30th up in Shoshone. caller good morning you're on the air good morning again how many pages of documents would it take to describe a single fair. What are you getting at, Keith, real fast? Explain what you're after there. Well, a single payer, you know, to you or I or somebody means everybody would pay a certain amount, yep. right? Yeah, and get the same... That's what they got in mind. Yeah, and get the same treatment. Take more from somebody, and yeah. somebody else still gets a free ride. Well, the whole thing is, Keith, and really listen to this, the absolute insanity of that guy's letter from Kimberly, which makes no sense, and he really didn't study this, uh, is that, uh, oh, we're going to tell the doctors what they can have for fair profits. We're going to tell the hospitals what they can have for fair profits. Let me tell you something. I don't care if a doctor charges buku money. As long as he can heal my wife or myself or my son or my grandchild, I don't care how much they make. But I'm telling you the service, the quality, and everything goes down when the government dictates what you can make and what you can't and what services are offered. This is stupid. That's right. And this single-payer deal is just absolutely ludicrous. There's just no way it can be achieved. Well, I certainly hope that you are right, but I also know that there are some nincompoops on the left that are really pushing for this. Keith, thank you again for your call. Always appreciate it. Thank you, sir. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye. I want to talk about some crazy news stories and get your opinion on some of these in just a moment. But don't forget the Burley Area Merchants Association sidewalk sales July 20th through the 22nd. Oh, my goodness. Shop locally and save money. Great stores in the Burley area for all your summer shopping. And it's not too early to think about this. Back to school shopping. Holy buckets. Remember, shop July 20th through the 22nd at the sidewalk sales in Burley. And thank our good friends with the Burley Area Merchants Association, Bama. Great folks in Burley. I heard a story, i got to tell you this one quickly, about a man that was fired. He worked at Home Depot. And what did he do? Well, supposedly he tried to stop a shoplifter. He threw some kind of a piece of machinery or something at the shoplifter to try to stop him from running out of the store stealing. And... With the imbecile attitude that we have today, the employee that was trying to save his employer money on stolen goods ends up being fired. I understand, and I I think this is nationwide, that Home Depot has a policy of no confrontation with shoplifters. Let them go. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life, and I want you to respond to this. I mean, that increases the costs for everyone, and it's an open-door policy for the vile, the stupid, and the uh, criminally intent in our society to go and do whatever they want because they're not going to get their fingers slapped. And this man, trying to save a theft and stop a theft at Home Depot, is fired. That is crazy.
I've got some other crazy stories in just a moment, but right now, uh, we'll take more calls, too. Give me a jingle on this Yellow Pig Day, Wrong Way Corrigan Day, and one for all of us, Get Out of the Doghouse Day. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Weather forecast brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. The lovely Dr. Christine Pickup knows all about sound. She knows all about hearing. She knows all about the different procedures to help restore your hearing. I mean, you might be having a problem that might be illness-related. You might have medication that's depleting your hearing. All of this and so many questions and reasons. You better make an appointment today at 312. Two zero nine five seven. They're right across from the Minidoka Hospital Emergency Room, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Well, it's time for us to saddle up and ride again for another work week. And as far as weather is concerned, this is what we can expect. It's going to be nice for today. Sunny skies, a little bit on the breezy side, nothing that we're not used to. Winds out of the west, 10 to 15 miles an hour. High of 89 for today. Sunset for tonight going to be right around 909. Clear skies for this evening, low of 54. Tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 93 with an overnight low of 56. And expect the same as we hit midweek on Wednesday, sunny and 93. That is your weather for Well done, Gina. Well done. Brought to you by Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Don't forget to call for a hearing screening today. It's not going to hurt you. It's kind of fun, really, if you want to know the truth. And the number is 312-0957. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids, serving you. Calls are welcome and appreciated. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Did you hear, and I hope it's a passing fancy and it never comes to fruition, uh, Bruce Jenner. And by the way, for those out there in the audience, I will never ever refer to someone with their new transgender name on this program. I don't believe in it, and I will therefore not adhere to it. Bruce Jenner is considering a run for the Senate in California. Oh, boy. Okay, that's crazy enough right there. And then, in other crazy news this morning, Bernie Sanders' wife, Jane Sanders, is crying sexism. Sexism! Sexism! Yeah, the only reason she says that they're investigating her is to uh, have a uh, kind of a sexism uh, investigation. And even though she might have had some illegal loans, oh no, it's just sexism. They're just after me to hurt me and Bernie. Ay, 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 ay. You gotta wonder. These people, you know how they tie their shoes on the right feet. It just makes you wonder. Uh, calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. By the way, as you may or may not know, I am with Coldwell Banker, uh, Canyonside Realty. And myself and Tad Haney have a home in the Burley area that absolutely is a beautiful home. And if you want more information about a three-bedroom, three-bathroom home, and uh, it's one of Burley's finest, all-brick exterior, beautiful home, give us a call. Uh, call Tad at 420-4195 or me at 312-2976. We would be more than happy to help you. All right, give me a jingle, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Here's another case of the law and the Supreme Court being trashed and the state of Hawaii thinks it's above the law and any ruling. They said, we don't care about the travel ban. We don't care what President Trump wants and or the Supreme Court has said is legal. We're going to do it our way. And I think back into the 80s with Ronald Reagan as president. This would have never been an attitude that would have been an egg that would hatch. Believe me. Uh, I think Ronald Reagan would have said uh, to the governor of Hawaii, (laughs) uh, behind closed doors and without a tape recorder running, I would have thought maybe Ronnie would have said, you better get your act together right now, dude, because you're in a heap of trouble if you don't. 
This is insane that a state of Hawaii thinks that they're going to do it their way and buck the system. No respect. This would not have happened with Ronald Reagan. I'll bet money on it. Give me a call, 436-2244, 1-866-927-4587. By the way, yours truly is walking on air this morning. For the first time all season long in Major League Baseball, my Cubs, after the All-Star break, I thought, oh, man, they don't have a chance this year. Their pitching is lousy, and they go four innings, and then they fall apart. The wheels come off, and then they're losing games. Holy smoke, since the All-Star break, they won three in a row. I mean, hey, (laughs) that's something else. And somebody else that's doing really good, too, are the Dodgers. This could be an exciting season. Did you hear that Bill Belichick, the coach of the New England Patriots, New England Patriots, is under attack by the left. Why is Bill Belichick under attack by the left? Because of a t-shirt. That's right. He had a t-shirt on. On the t-shirt, it shows a Navy SEAL going after a turban-headed bad guy. And the slogan on the uh, T-shirt is, life is great. Now, quite frankly, I thought the T-shirt was well stated. We've got a lot of enemies in this world. Yes, they are of that vintage and characterization. And it shows our soldiers taking charge and taking command. Life is great. But the left in this country has gone after Mr. Belichick and demanded that he never wear the T-shirt again and that he apologize. Personally, I am trying to get a copy of the T-shirt and wear it on this program some morning so that across the nation on my webcam, you can see it. So if you know where I can get one, please let me know. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. Hey, by the way, get where you're going this summer with the best of tires, the safest of tires, and all the other services that your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers can and will provide for you. They've got the best of tires. You know, we're talking about the backcountry tire for your pickups and SUVs. Outstanding ride, ultimate in durability. This tire really does the job for you and your vehicle. And uh, we're talking about the best in brake service. Man, they've got highly ta- trained technicians that really understand brakes. All you need to do is just get in there today and see any one of the seven locations serving you. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. Yes, they are the best. They want you to drive safely this summer, and for that matter, all year long. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in and see them today. Holy cow, let's take a look here. Oh, we have a call. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. Well, it's about time. It's past time. Hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up. Yeah, the liberals, they need to realize one thing. My rights don't end where their feelings begin. Amen. I mean, if it, we need just to do more and more of that, and pretty quick they'll get so mad their heads will explode. I don't want to be politically correct. I refuse to be politically correct, whether it's not using Bruce Jenner's transgendered name or whether it's deploring the idiocy of Home Depot and not stopping uh, shoplifters or anything. We need to clean up our act, Dougie. We do. We need to make another sequel to Blazing Saddles. That's an interesting analogy. I mean, I know that that movie, if it was to play in the theaters today, their heads would explode. Oh, my. <laughs> and, and it's a terrible thing when a society gets to where they can't laugh at themselves. 
Well, we can't because the liberalness in this country is preaching some insane ideas of going into a losing situation with socialism and everything else. This has got to stop. It does. Well, you look how Hitler did it. Yep. He got rid of all the books. He, everything was politically correct over there. He yeah. got rid of all the... Anything that was against him, he got rid of it. That's what politically correct is trying to do in America. Hey, real quick, Doug, I don't mean... I've only got about 30 seconds left, and I want you to talk about st- uh, supporting the Raider families from the Raising Raiders fundraising. Uh, quickly give us some information on that. And again, keep it short. I've only got 30 seconds. Fast. Yes, it's... Uh... It's a place where you can donate to help the families of the 13 victims that died in that plane crash. Uh, I'll try to get it up on my Facebook. In fact, I think I put it on my Facebook page, and I sent you a copy of it. Yes. And you can just go there, donate 10 bucks, 5 bucks, 50 bucks, 1000 bucks, whatever you want to donate, and it goes to help the families of those uh, 13 soldiers that lost their life. Absolutely. I'm glad you brought it up and uh, sent me the information, and we'll keep mentioning it. I appreciate it, Doug. Have a wonderful day. i got to head for the news. You bet. God bless everyone. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the first hour, everybody. Uh, great first hour, quite frankly. And uh, next hour, we've got an interview with uh, Chris Taper with the Lincoln County Fair and then Vicky's Country Garden and then Yvonne Barkley with the United States Forest Service Fires Lookout. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go away. We are back in the saddle for hour number two. Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, some of our great advertisers, including Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River. Was at your disposal. That's a hundred percent correct, and they've got all the porta potties for your party. Whether it's a reunion, a wedding, or whatever, hey, you can't go through the checklist without saying we need potties. Well, they've got them all. Porta potties from Western Waste Services. Always at your disposal. Call them today. Seven three four six nine six nine. Hey, real quick, I want to remind you about our friends over at Ark Animal Hospital. Hello, Doctor Bill, at seven fifty. 21st Street uh, in Hayburn. Number to call, 678-1177. Have that number on your refrigerator. They have warm hearts for cold noses. And they've been voted Minicash's Best Veterinary Hospital again many, many times, that award. And uh, they absolutely are a mixed animal practice, meaning big or small, they love them all and can help you with your pets and animals. Ark Animal Hospital in Hayburn, 678-1177. Let's go to the phone line right now, and we have a gentleman that is with us on the line representing the Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo, Chris Tabor. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I am very, very honored to have you on the program. I have said for a long time, Chris, that the Lincoln county fair is one of the true country county fairs in the country it doesn't get any better it doesn't get any more country than what it really should be than right there at lincoln county how would you respond to that i would say that is 100 percent correct we uh you know we're not a very big fair by any means but we as a fair board work very hard to try to put some good things together for the community and especially for the kids you know, what's the main theme this year uh, as far as what you want to try to have people remember when they think about the Lincoln County Fair? Well, you know, the community kind of all comes together, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just kind of a like more of a community event. You know, there's a, a lot of people in the community that have a hand in putting the fair on, and, um, you know, it's just, 
it's just one of those things that brings the whole, you know, the three towns in Lincoln County together and uh, obviously all the kids to show their animals and everything. You know, and what I like about county fairs like yours and being from a really agricultural county back in Wisconsin originally, uh, I can appreciate what you're doing out there because, I mean, you've got everything geared for agriculture. You've got everything geared for the really understanding of what goes on out here in the West. And, man, this is a country fair that everybody should take part in. What are some of the highlights that you want to feature here quickly this morning? Um, all from about Wednesday on, we're going to have a gentleman by the name of Freddy Perez doing some, um, he's just a kind of a, a show. He puts on a show a couple times in the, during the day and we tied in a, uh, he has a Frisbee toss and we got Farm Bureau to sponsor this Frisbee toss for a chance to win $10,000. Oh my. And every day he'll draw some names and, uh. You'll have a chance to throw a Frisbee through a little, he's got a uh, little setup where you, and there's a slot in this wall, and you got to throw this Frisbee, and if you get it through that slot, obviously you, you win. Um, so I'm, we're glad to have Farm Bureau on board with that, to help sponsor that. Um, and that's going to happen Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, probably part of Saturday. Um, our fair kind of kicks off on Saturday the 22nd with, with our junior rodeo. Um, we're going to have uh, a uh, two rounds, um, and we've got some mini bulls coming in, and anybody 9 to 14 that weighs under 130 pounds can come in and sign up to ride the mini bulls. Okay. Um, so we're kind of that's something new we're going to do is add the mini bulls in this year. All right, well, Chris, let me interrupt you here for a second, if I can. Uh, Chris, let me... You know, they're still signing up for that. Well, Chris, let me interrupt you for just a second, if I can, Chris. And uh, I'm, because of a lack of time, I want to make sure I get everything in. Along with the junior rodeo, you're going to have a ranch rodeo, and that's going to be on Wednesday, July 26th, starting at 7 p.m. Quickly, give us some parameters about that ranch rodeo. Uh, the ranch rodeo, usually that's just the teams uh, that come in, and um, a lot of times it's families that, you know, it's four-person teams. Um, I don't participate in that, so I don't know all of the aspects of that. But uh, that is very well attended okay. um, because a lot of that is local teams. Um, and then on the uh, 27th and the 28th, we have the IMPRA rodeo. It starts at 8 o'clock. We have our parade on the 27th that starts at 6. Um, and then kind of our marquee event for the last three years has been the United Truck and Tractor Pull mm. at, at our arena. That has been huge for us. Okay. Um, we've, uh, that's turned to be a big, uh, we, uh, you know, United Truck and Tractor Pullers put on an uh, awesome shoot. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. To get this big we can. We usually pack the house that night. Well, I know that uh, being that I've been up there and watched uh, on various times all the activity and all the fun up there in Shoshone, with the main theme from Pioneer Days to Modern Ways, this is Mr. Chris Tabor on the phone with us, inviting everybody up to the Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo, the 22nd through the 30th, and I guarantee you, you'll see a real county fair the way it was meant to be. Chris, I thank you for coming on the program. Hopefully we can get you on again. God bless and have a super fair this year. Thank you, and we'd like to invite everybody to come and participate. All right, sir. Have a good one. Thank you. Yep, have a good day. Uh, nice man right there, Chris Tabor, with the Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo. And you know, really, it's true. Uh, they they got something up there that is so unique to America. It's a real country county fair. God bless them.
Okay, Hanson Mortuary, thank you, Joel Heward and his staff and his family for all they do for the community. And they have so much of a flexible program there, flexible hours, so that they are always there when you need them. And you get the attention that you deserve in helping you with all the arrangements, all the arrangements, when there's the passing of a loved one. I urge you to write the number down, save the number, 436-563. That number again, 436-5636, Hanson Mortuary, located at 710 6th Street in Rupert. And remember this, always serving you and your family and upholding the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity. They will and they can help you and your family, Hanson Mortuary in Rupert. And also, real quick, before we go over to Miss Vicky, I want to remind you about the Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame. My goodness sakes, yes, we're going to have our big induction ceremonies on Friday night, the 28th, and, of course, on the 29th at the Canyon Crest Event Center. Call for tickets. The first night is tough enough to wear a pink night gala with the proceeds going to help breast cancer awareness with St. Luke's Foundation. Saturday night, the 29th, Hall of Fame induction, And get your tickets by calling Katie at the Canyon Crest Events Center at 733-9392, Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame. Right now, I think she's on the line and waiting for us, the lovely Miss Vicki at Vicki's Country Gardens. Good morning. Good morning, Deb. It's a beautiful morning out there. You sound just like Mr. Rogers taking off his sweater and his tennis shoes. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Beautiful day in the neighborhood, right? (laughs) (laughs) What are you doing over there? Well, actually, I'm still at home. I decided to get a little bit of yard work done this morning, like I tell everybody else to do do it in the morning. So I'm at home kind of doing some watering and things like that. But over at the store, we're still... They're ready to answer any questions and help out with all the problems that seem to be accumulating about right now in the garden. Okay. Now, I had a couple of letters, and we go through these letters. There's the sameness every year that you've been on the program. But, you know, people want to know. Some people can't be listening at a certain time. A lady wrote in from uh, the Burley area. And she said, I have never raised a garden before in my life, and I have planted radishes and beans and corn and tomatoes. How do I know when they are ripe and ready for me to eat? Okay, now your radishes are going to come on quite fast right now with the heat. Keep them nice and damp. Just, you know, keep the ground moist all the time around them so they, they won't get hot on you. But you'll be able to tell... On your radishes, you can just you, know, you can just pull one, and if they're a nice size, then they're ready to eat. Um, but you, they're going to grow quite fast, so don't don't wait too long. A lot of people are saying they're getting radishes within two two and a half weeks after they plant, and you have to replant on radishes, or otherwise you'll lose the you know the the rest of them that you don't get to because they do mature really fast right now in the heat. Uh, of course, your tomatoes and stuff, you're going to watch those, and as they start to ripen, you'll know how those, you know, how that's going to go. Uh, corn, right now, um, you need to give it some extra fertilizer right now. Now's the time to give your corn a nitrogen boost to keep it going, keep it growing. It's a real heavy nitrogen feeder, and you just have to wait for the ears to set on and just watch it. And you'll see the ears fill out, and then you just peek in there every so often and see if they're getting about ready. So it's just a matter of going out and watching it grow. And and, uh, your early stuff, like I say, radishes and that are going to be ready really early right now. They're going to be kicking in and growing really, really fast. Okay. Now, uh, that brings up another letter that I had sent to me this last week, and you almost answered the question in its entirety. What crops or what plants in the garden can you grow more of off and on during the season? You said radishes. Is there anything else that after you harvest it, you still have enough time to grow something more? Well, yeah. There's. I mean, lettuce is something right now that lettuce and spinach, you're going to plant small amounts of it. And, and then as soon as it comes up, uh, get another little small section going, depending on the size of your family and how much lettuce you use. But you're only going to be able, in this heat, to cut lettuce probably two, 
maybe three times before it starts getting a little bit bitter on you, starts overgrowing. So just plant small batches, have another one coming up right behind it, and utilize it that way. Uh, a lot of people plant two or three batches of beans. If you don't want to can 900 jars of beans all at once, can up the first batch, plant another set about now, then it'll be coming on in a month or so, and you can do another one later in the fall also. Okay. Uh, a lot of people do the spinach, the radishes, those kind of things all, all summer long because of the fact that, you know, you have to utilize just smaller amounts of them. Uh, a lot of people will plant a fall setting of peas because peas like cool weather. So about the end of August, they'll plant another batch of peas. Uh, carrots are another thing that can be planted now and for a later fall situation. Uh, there's quite a few things like that. You know, you mentioned spinach. I love spinach. I can't get enough of a spinach salad. Do we grow a lot of spinach around here? We do. Uh, there's a lot of different varieties of spinach. Uh, we have a baby spinach seed in uh, this year that I was able to find. And then we have some of the bigger uh, the bigger leaf spinach and that type of thing that you can cut it young and have the, the younger spinach or you can uh, grow it on out. Another thing that's real popular is the kale that goes in with the spinach and that type of thing. And uh, those are all things that can be planted randomly throughout the summer. Okay. They just, uh, they're a cool weather crop, so in the heat they grow faster, and you, you, can't, you can't keep them going as long as you can in the cool weather. You just have to plant them a little more often and use them quicker. Okay. Now, I want to revert back. You were talking about sweet corn, and we were talking about when to harvest it, when you can eat it, etc. And a lady wrote in and she said, I planted a garden last year, and my corn did not taste right at all. I don't know about the different varieties of how... I'm." paraphrasing here. I'm trying to go through this whole letter. Uh, she said, I don't know about all the different corn varieties, and I don't know which ones are the best for eating or the sweetest. Can you tell me? Well, there's a lot of varieties of sweet corn. Uh, the main thing you want to make sure is that if you're out in the country and you've got a, a field of field corn next to you, be real careful in how you plant your sweet corn because it can cross on, on field corn. But there's a lot of new varieties of sweet corn for gardens. We have the bicolors, which are the yellow and white. Uh, there's three or four or more good varieties of those. Those are always very sweet. Uh, our most popular at the store is a yellow corn. It's an early corn, 75-day, and it's called Bodacious. And it's a very sweet corn, uh, good canning corn and that type of thing. Um, just kind of have to kind of test your knowledge a little bit on sweet corn. Just make sure you read on it if it's sugar enhanced, uh, has an F-E behind it. That should mean that it is an extra sweet corn. But the uh, main thing is to make sure if you are out in the country, don't plant it next to a field of field corn. Or if you are going to do that, you have to make sure you have enough rows that it won't completely cross-pollinate. You know, I never heard that before. I, I guess I must have been living in a vacuum, but I don't think I've ever even asked or had you say that before about the possibility of cross-pollination. What happens then if you don't know it? Uh, your sweet corn takes on more, uh, a blander taste, more like, I mean, tougher. Uh, the cows don't mind it, but people don't usually like that cross on a, on a field corn. <laughs> uh, you just have to make sure... When you're planting, and the farmers all know this, when they plant sweet corn in their, with their field corn, you plant uh, enough rows, like six rows or so, on the edge of the field so that only the middle row, the row that's next to the field corn, will pollinate, and the rest of them will pollinate on their own. Oh, my. Uh, pollination is a, is a very good thing, and a lot of people in their gardens only plant one row of corn, which is not necessarily a good thing. If you're only going to... Do a little bit of corn plant, two or three, at least two, if not three or four short rows, so that you can get the pollination going in there uh, to make the corn do better. Okay.
Wow, you are good at this. Hey, by the way, uh, uh, another lady wrote in, and it wasn't anything about gardening or flowers or anything. It was about her outside exterior of her home. And she said, I don't know the first thing. Uh, She said, very unfortunately, her husband had passed away about two years ago. She moved out here. She doesn't know anything about outside uh, yard decor or anything. How does she get help? Uh, well, she can come in and talk to us. I mean, if she's needing someone to do some um, yard work and some and some help like that, there's some really good people around that can do that kind of thing for her and help her keep her yard up and doing good. If she's just needing some advice on how to fertilize her lawn and, and you know, uh, trees and shrubs and things like that, we'd be more than glad to help her. If she wants to just come in and talk to us, we'll see if we can't give her some advice and help her get things going the way they should. Okay, and real fast, the last little letter that we had this year uh, for uh, the, all the rodents and all the bad guys out there that want to eat your garden up, what can you do to protect your goodies? Well, um, that's a kind of a tricky situation there. We do have a lot of mice and a lot of voles that are still causing a lot of problems. And um, there's a few things that can be done, uh, I mean, you can use the poison grains and things like that. We have some solar spikes that work really well at the store that you put down in the ground, and they put off a sound throughout the ground, which doesn't kill them. It just it annoys them, and they leave. <laughs> could you Wait a minute. Could you do that with relatives, too, Vicki? Or move away from you. <laughs> but that's one of the things that has been working really well. A lot of the baits and the killers and stuff, you People are afraid to use them because they've got dogs and cats that can possibly ingest them and, and get sick also. Oh, boy. But now these, uh, I want to hear more about these things that you stick in the ground and they make some kind of a noise and the rodents leave. Is that right? Yes. Uh-huh. It's, they're solar powered. they got a solar battery in them. Uh, they'll cover about 7,500 square feet. <clears throat> and uh, they will, uh, they put out a vibration And then they put out, you'll hear a a slight little beeping sound, but it goes out through the ground, and it works on kind of their nervous system, and they don't like it, they don't tolerate it, so they move away from it. So you can kind of move them around, move them out of one area, and if they move into another area, then pick it up and move it to another area. Okay. It has to have some good sunlight to it, and make sure you set it somewhere where you're not going to run over it with a lawnmower. Uh, let's not go there. Okay. <laughs> I'm dangerous with my lawnmower. Real fast, what are some of the specials right now at Vicky's Country Garden, 185 South, 600 West of Paul? What do you got cooking over there that brings people in? Well, we've still got a real good selection of perennials in. Everybody's kind of sprucing up their yard with perennials because they don't, they like the stuff that comes back all the time. Uh, we're going to be starting some random specials on some shrubs and some trees. We have fruit trees that are uh, 20% off right now. Um, it's a little hot to be planting stuff, but if you'll take care of it, you'll do fine with it. And uh, we still have all we still got the bark and the rock and uh, everything to finish off your landscaping job. So then all the chemicals for the fungicides and the insecticides and all of the good stuff that's going to keep everything healthy and alive and well. We've got all of that also. You know, I am glad that you finally treated yourself to a little time off, and I hope you get all rested up and ready to jump back at the world. This is the lovely Miss Vicki at Vicki's Country Garden, 185 South, 600 West of Paul. What are the hours that you're open, Vicki? Okay, we are open. Our hours have changed a little bit with, with the heat, and people are slowing down, not needing us in there quite as often. So we're open from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, 10 to 4 on Saturday, and then we're closed on Sundays. But if you need something on the different hours, if you need bark or rock or something like that, just give me a call, set up an appointment, and I'll see if I can't make it work for you. A wonderful lady, and I've enjoyed having her on the program. And that's Miss Vicki at Vicki's Country Garden in Paul. The number to call, 438-5663. Vicki, enjoy your morning. Have a second cup of coffee. Relax, and we'll talk to you later. Thank you.
All right. Thanks, Deb. All right. Take care. Wonderful lady right there, Vicki at Vicki's Country Gardens. And believe me, she knows all about how does your garden grow. Hey, by the way, right now I want to remind you about what's going on with the Burley Area Merchants Association. You know what? Shop locally. They are going to have a great big sidewalk sale July 20th, 21st, and 22nd. You'd better get over there and great stores for all your summer shopping and your back to school shopping. Oh, yeah. Not too early at all to think about that back to school shopping. And you'll be supporting the local businesses that really support you. So please get over over there and remember the Burley Area Merchants Association big big sidewalk sales July 20th 21st and 22nd in Burley thank you Bama Burley Area Merchants Association good good folks over there by the way too don't forget over in Rupert in the Rupert area at 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the world oh my goodness let's ride let's ride where the fun is sold they're open Monday through Friday 9 to 6 Saturdays 9 to 4 boy with all the hot weather this last weekend I heard a lot of people saying boy I wish I'd have gone to let's ride and got a watercraft and cruised around around the lakes and the rivers oh my goodness sakes they're still there they're waiting to serve you and they've got all the four wheelers and they've got the side by sides they've got all the accessories great big accessory department and of course a super service department to keep you running all of this and more at let's ride 270 highway 24 between rupert and the world yep where the fun is sold really good folks by the way, too, over in that same neck of the woods, don't forget our friends with Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. You know, your life insurance, health insurance, retirement planning, employee benefits for you, your family, your business, they are waiting, waiting right now to serve you. They're very accessible and devoted to serving other people. All you have to do is just pick up the phone and make a call, make an appointment, 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance. Insurance Highway 24 in Rupert. You be sure and give them a call today. In just a moment, we're going to talk to a lady that knows all about fire. She wrote an outstanding uh, article for the Farm Bureau magazine not too long ago, uh, all about uh, being uh, able to protect your property from wildfire. And we're going to be talking to Yvonne Barkley in just a moment. Stand by. We'll get her on the air momentarily. Also want to remind you that Ag Express is looking for drivers. That's right. And and uh, they've got a really nice uh, employment program. I mean, man alive, you're home every night using new and maintained equipment. They've got vacation schedules and benefit programs and 401k programs. And even for the retired folks, they'll work around your schedule two or three days a week. Full and part-time positions available. Ag Express. Call Dale and Paul at 438-8886. Allen in Twin Falls at 731-2495. And Chad in Burley at 670-7219. Ag Express is looking for drivers. Yep, Ag Express is looking for you. Right now, let's talk to this lady, an associate extension forester for the University of Idaho, Yvonne Barkley. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? You know, Yvonne, it's very nice to have you on the program this morning uh, because I think this topic right now with all the fires that are looming around us all over the state of Idaho, we need to know how we can protect our property from wildfires that can just absolutely uh, destroy everything we own. Uh, give us a little basics of your article, uh, the who's and what's. Go ahead and I'll give you the floor. All right. Well, uh, first thing that we should all realize is that we live in a fire-based ecosystem, and so we should expect wildland fires, just as people in Tornado Alley expect tornadoes. So being prepared is probably the number one best defense that we all have. Uh, a, a new term that is coming more and more popular is becoming firewise, and firewise is a mindset of landowners living in these in a fire-based ecosystem such as Idaho, where we expect wildfires and are prepared for them. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you could do is look at your home. 
uh, uh, a home that is not easily ignited is a home that will not easily burn. Your roof is probably the most, the largest area that is exposed to wildland fires, and you should have a non-combustible roof, and that means uh, anybody with shakes or wooden shingles on their roof have a much higher, oh, yeah. much higher. Uh, chance of having their house burned down in yes. a wildfire. Mm-hmm. Most wildland fires ig- um, ignite homes not by direct flames hitting the house, by but by these showers of flying embers and brands that right. can fly up to five miles in front of the face of a, of a wildfire. Whoa. So you can imagine uh, these this flurry of red snow, basically, um, just showering down upon all your landscape in your home and so by making your property fire resistant is the best way to stop ignition so the first thing you want to do is look at your house look at the roof uh, and uh, make sure you have a non-combustible roof also look around your house we do most of our living right up against the house right in what we call zone one and right there up against the house, we have a lot of flammable items such as wicker and wooden patio furniture. There's cushions and doormats and window boxes, garbage cans without lids. You can imagine when we have this flurry of, of flaming brands and embers that fall down on all these items around the home. They can land in there. They could get catch, you know, sit and smolder for long periods of time and then catch fire to whatever they're sitting in. So a good thing to do is to look around your home and make sure that you have a place to move all this stuff in the event a wildfire threatens and, um, you know, either can be able to cover it or move it under cover someplace with doors and closed windows. Okay, now, Yvonne, let me... The thing that people need to know is that if it's attached to the structure, we consider it part of the structure. So if you have uh, a deck, a wooden fence, stairways or surrounding anything surrounding your structure that's flammable and you need to evacuate, you should try and open gates and wet down surfaces close to the house. Okay. Um, uh, So that's the home, and then we'd like to talk about the landscape after that. So your landscape can provide quite a bit of protection to you if you just look at it as part of your defensive plan. And preparedness, as I said, is, is really key to this whole thing. Um, what we, another term that has become popular is defensible space. And what this is is how you treat your landscape to help you be less susceptible to ignition from wildfire. This, lands, this defensible zone is usually divided up into three sections. Mm-hmm. The first zone begins at your home and goes out 30 feet in all directions. And this is what we call zone one, and we like to keep this zone clean and green. We like to uh, see firewise plant materials chosen in areas around the home. We like to see that that uh, turf is well-maintained and kept short and green. A well-watered lawn is actually very fire-resistant, and so it is a good protection in your zone. You want to, uh, in your zone one, you want to remove highly flammable plants such Press. as junipers growing around the house and replace them with low growing, well watered plants. And also want to remove those combustible materials such as bark and leaf litter and needle litter as they accumulate. That's not just around your home, but also from your roof and out of the gutters. And that also goes for your outbuildings because they are important to you as well. And um, they may be sheltering livestock or non-commercial livestock, and you want to keep that those zones. Um, consider those zones part of your defensible landscape. All right, now, let, so, Yvonne, let me let me jump in here. Feet out from your from your structures, and that's what we like to call a pruned and groomed landscape. Right there, you have well a well maintained green belt, and it uh, you like here. You want to group. Some firewise plant materials together in islands. You like to keep them spaced apart so they're not tight and have the crowns touching. And these islands um, 
can look very attractive surrounded by brock, rock or brick retaining walls and then some well-watered turf once again. If you can't water your turf, then keep it really short. Okay, uh, now, whoa, 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 Yvonne, 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 Yvonne. Home. Yvonne, wait a minute. During Wheels, let me talk to her for a moment, please. Yvonne, let me interrupt a little bit and not just have uh-huh. you go on uh, without stop because I have some questions, and we need to ask those as you go through this. Number one, I want to go back to the home, and I want to talk about the roofing. Uh, do most people, are they aware or cognizant about the roofing materials, the clay tiles, etc., when they build their homes in a severely high rate for fire area? Do they really know this? Do insurance companies tell them? Does anybody alert them to this fact? Um, more and more people are um, starting to be aware. But no, there isn't an I mean, across-the-board law or guidance for new building, you know, for stru- new structures in the wildland urban interface. And insurance companies really are just in the business of selling insurance. And so, what we are now to, now starting to see are homeowners associations that are starting to require people to build according to firewise principles and practices, which are the things that we're talking about today. And those non-flammable roofing materials are just, as you said, they're concrete or clay tiles, which, which can look very much like shake roofs, so you're not losing the aesthetics and while still being fiberized. Also, fiberglass and the typical asphalt composite shingles or a metal roof is also a really good choice. Okay, now I want to also mention right here uh, about landscaping. Uh, I live in a high desert area, if you will, and we have many, many trees and shrubs really, really close to our home. The fire danger, per se, is not as great as living up in the mountains or perhaps with a high terrain of trees, etc. But still, there is that danger. Uh, what about our landscaping? What about planting trees and shrubs right up next to the building? Um, actually, rangeland environments have just as high of a chance of a wildland fire as those of us living in forested environments. So don't leave, let your guard down just because you live in a rangeland environment. And um, I know that people like shade around their homes. If you, you know, you, ha- you can have a landscape around your home. A firewise landscape doesn't have to be an ugly landscape. So if you choose the right plant materials and space them and arrange them in the right way, you can have a lovely environment close to your home while still being a protective landscape. You could still have shade trees. I would choose deciduous trees over conifer trees because they don't tend to be as flammable. They don't have as many oils and terpenes in them as our conifer trees do. And just place those trees away from the home. Make sure the branches aren't touching the 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 roof of the house and make sure that they're spaced apart from each other so they're not touching each other. Okay. Okay. Now, what about, uh, I want to have you elaborate a little bit on livestock and the caring of livestock in a fire area, fire danger zone, if in fact a fire breaks out. What are some of the precautions that people need to have for their horses, livestock, etc.? Well, what they should do is also have a preparedness preparedness plan in place for their pets, non-commercial and commercial livestock. Your commercial livestock, that's going to be a bit of a problem. I don't see anybody evacuating a thousand head of cattle, for example. But um, your non-commercial livestock and your pets are, you know, kind of part of the family for a lot of folks. And so you're going to want to have a plan in place. A lot of shelters don't necessarily take pets. And so, but uh, most if not all counties in Idaho, have emergency preparedness plans in place, and that includes preparedness for wildfire evacuations. What you need to do is know who your um, fire protection district is and have their phone number ready. Know where your county has um, made arrangements for evacuation of horses, non-commercial livestock, and pets. Usually that's the county fairground. Um, I, you talk to your veterinarian and see if they know where to take your pets. Also have emergency preparedness kits put together for both you, your family, and your pets and, and non-commercial livestock. In your pet's 
kit, you want to have uh, records of ownership, vaccinations, especially rabies tags should be attached to collars um, or on, uh, uh, put names and addresses on the collar or harnesses of the horses. Um, make sure that once, if there is danger or threat of wildfire, that you contain your animals so they don't panic and run away and you, you know, lose time trying to find them before yeah. you evacuate. Yeah. And um, also in that kit, put any medications that you need, maybe a photograph of your pets, any um, special needs that they um, may require, because you may not be on site where they are, and others may have to care for them um, in the event of an evacuation. You know, and what you're saying, and wheels ride the gain a little bit, watch the feedback, please. Uh, What you're saying, Yvonne, happened to a friend of mine in the fires uh, that took place in Colorado Colorado Springs area a couple of years ago. And uh, without anything like identification procedures with pictures of his horses, etc., and he didn't know on the ones that he managed to load into a trailer, he didn't know where to go. All of this information that you're giving is really vital for any Anybody that lives within a high fire area. Yes. And evacuation preparedness for your you and your family is also critical. You know, we all put a lot of work and we have a lot of emotion and time and money invested in our homes and our and our properties, but when it comes right down to it, the important thing is the lives of us and our loved ones. And if the danger is high, you need to be ready to evacuate. Most people die during um, because they, they left it too long. They right. waited to see what would happen, and then it was too late. You know, this is an outstanding article. Now, what about information brochures or something like that? Where would people get this information other than your article that appeared in this magazine? Okay, two places. The first is the University of Idaho Extension Forestry website, and that is um, www.uidaho.edu slash extension slash forestry, and you could go to the wildland fire section of our website. The second place is a website for Idaho Firewise, and Idaho Firewise is a nonprofit organization that we have established in Idaho, and all the major players in the state are on the board of directors. So that's University of Idaho, Idaho Department of Lands, Forest Service, Bureau of Land Management, Nez Perce Tribe, Department of Emergency Services, Idaho Bureau of Fire Chiefs, and others, uh, Idaho Parks and Rec, we're all, they're all represented on the board. We have all come together to provide a kind of a one-stop shopping for landowners, managers, and anybody interested in wildfire prepared, preparedness to come and get information. You know, and that uh, URL is www.idahofirewise.org. You know, Yvonne, this is an excellent article, and it caught my attention. I read it in its entirety, and you did a really good job with this. Unfortunately, I would imagine a lot of people haven't taken heed on some very sensible issues that you've talked about in this article. Are people learning? Are people thinking about transitioning their property and making it safer? Or are you speaking to deaf ears? You know, I've been I've been in this uh, in this particular arena educating people since 1993, and it's taking a long time. But yes, people are starting to take responsibility for themselves. You cannot count on your fire protection district or the Forest Service or some other agency to come and save you. There's just not enough resources to go around to save every property. So really, personal responsibility is key, and we are seeing people step up and take action, which is very heartening. Well, i tell you what, this lady did a wonderful job on this article, and I urge everybody to get this information. Like I said, this lady, an associate extension forester for the University of Idaho, Yvonne Barkley, thank you for coming on my program this morning. I appreciate all the information. All right.
right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice lady and very knowledgeable. And I caught that article in the Farm Bureau magazine. It's called uh, Protect Your Property from Wildfire. Excellent tips in there from Yvonne Barkley, and I appreciate that. Oh, my goodness, we've got to get a weather forecast on here right now. And the weather brought to you by Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company. And then I want some more phone calls, so open up the phone lines. Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company have been providing accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. With the best of tax return preparation, tax planning, business consulting, bookkeeping services, retirement planning, all of this and many, many more services to you, your family, and your business. And they've got two locations to serve you in Burley and Rupert. And right now, they bring you the weather. Well, it's time for us to saddle up and ride again for another work week. And as far as weather is concerned, this is what we can expect. It's going to be nice for today. Sunny skies, a little bit on the breezy side, nothing that we're not used to. Winds out of the west, 10 to 15 miles an hour. High of 89 for today. Sunset for tonight is going to be right around 9.09. Clear skies for this evening, low of 54. Tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 93 with an overnight low of 56. And expect the same as we hit midweek on Wednesday, sunny and 93. That is your weather for Seventh Rank. And thank you, Gina. Don't forget to get a hold of Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. CPAs that can and will help you. You know, they can help people starting a business or maybe starting a partnership or a corporation. And people that want to hire more employees, the do's and the don'ts, etc. They are there to serve you. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company at 1710 Overland and Burley and 625th Street in Rupert. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. All right, your turn. Give me a call, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I'd like to hear what you have to say this morning. Give us a jingle, and we would love to hear anything. You bring up the topic, we'll talk about it for a few minutes. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. While I am waiting for your call, I want to remind you about Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center. What nice people, and they've been with us for quite some time. They're located at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. The number to call, 436-3200. Now, they are the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicash area, and they urge you and they want you to make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best place because they want want to help serve the members of your family those that might need a little bit of assistance they open their doors to visit uh, anytime stop by and check out their beautiful patio and their backyard where they hold barbecues they're small compared to some but with a bigger heart than most. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, 924 Christian Way in Rupert, 436-3200. Excuse me, got a little frog in my throat this morning. And uh, I want to urge you to, while I'm waiting for your phone calls that certainly should be coming in, we're going to have our lunch bunch this Thursday, the 20th at 1130 at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner at 611 North Overland in Burley. Our thanks again to Smith's Food, Hanson Mortuary, Stokes Groceries, Doug Martin with the Redneck Cup Holders. And uh, we're going to have all of those people uh, that are giving away certificates for our lunch bunch. 1130 this Thursday at Denny's Restaurant, America's Diner. Don't you miss it. All right, calls are welcome. 436 2244 1866 927 4587. You know, earlier this morning I was criticizing some of the letters that uh, came into the Times News over the weekend. Well, there's also a good letter that I want to highlight in just a few moments. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Thank you for your call. Good morning again. You know, I, I would like to talk a little bit about these automobile warranties that are advertised on TV so strongly. Okay. They are, for the most part, bogus. Why do you say and that? I'll tell you why. It's because when you get to the point of where you need to use it, first you've got to find a shop 
that will accept their conditions. Mm-hmm. You know, because a lot of these shops have been burned by warranty companies. They do the work and then they don't pay. All right, I'm going to stop you right there. Keith, wait a minute. I have a question. Uh, it's funny you should bring this up because last week I had three notifications in the mail and two via the telephone. Oh, Mr. Bell, your car is, uh, your warranty is over and now you have to call us right away. You better do it immediately or blah, blah, blah. This, to me, is nothing more than a scam. Am I right? You are absolutely right. For one thing, it is so automated that they're sending me information on the car that I haven't had for four years. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. And, you know, so they're not, they're just fishing is what they're doing. But it, you know, and there's nothing wrong with auto warranties. We used to sell them all the time. I understand. I business because yeah. It's a protection for the customer. Yep. If it's a good one. But now, wait a minute, 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 Keith, quickly, in the time remaining, how do people discern and confirm that the warranty then the uh, the supposed entries about the warranty are good and legal and upstanding? How do you know? You don't. And what my thought is on it, when they got a BBB up there, that doesn't mean better business bureau. It means you better watch out because I think these warranty companies get a hold of the bureau and pay them money to, you know, be a good citizen. All right, would a person would a person be better off, Keith? Would a person be better off? Because I'm running out of time. Uh, would a person be better off to call a uh, like Ford Motor Company or Chrysler Motor Company or GM and ask them rather than deal with some of these deals over the phone or in the mail? Absolutely, because if something goes wrong with that warranty, where are you going to go? Yeah, you the customer for the complaint. If you got a dealer that you bought it from. He'll have to answer some of those things. And so he's not going to sell you a bogus warranty. These ones you see over TV or in the mail, that's probably the last you'll hear of unless you send your premium. Okay. Well, I'm certainly glad that you mentioned that because it was really ironic. Last week I had about five of these different companies call me. They may have been, might have been the same, I don't know. But uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that. But uh, quickly, the best thing to do would be to contact a representative of the motor company, be it Ford, Chrysler, GM, Chevrolet, whatever, and go that way rather than try to get involved in something that might be bogus and cost you money, right? Or go to an independent dealer. Okay. Because they can tell you their experience, the company they use. Uh, some of them have, uh, some of these new car dealers have used the same companies for years, and they do exactly what they're supposed to do. The dealership promotes it because there is a percentage in it for them. But most of all, it will get them to do the warning work. All right, I got to run, Keith, but I certainly appreciate your comments. A very interesting topic. God bless you, man. Thanks for your call. You bet. Bye-bye. All right. Hey, that was good information right there, and I appreciate that. And Keith, of course, being in the car business almost all of his life, he knows. Right now, we're going to send it back over to our main studios, and we'll be back with Mark Tapson at uh, 10.06 and Dr. Gerard Lomero at 10.30. Don't you go away. All righty. Last hour on a Monday, July 17, and the numbers are 71717 today. Thank you very much. Zevith Ranch brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Call them at 734-6969. We're going to have our guest. 
guest on in just a moment, I want to say thank you very much to two businesses that are supporting a segment on Thursdays called Cache County School Days. First of all, our thank yous to A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley. Believe me, they've got all the baby clothing, all the baby furniture, all the birthday presents, the games, the puzzles. And by the way, if you're in a profession where you wear scrubs, they carry all the Cherokee scrubs and the shoes. So please stop by A Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley. And of course, Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue in Burley. All your outpatient surgeries and save you money. That's right, cataract surgeries, colonoscopies, and knee surgeries, and many, many more. All you need to do is find out more by calling 677-8888. 677-8888. Ambulatory Surgery Center and A Child's World bringing you school days in Cache County. Right now, let's go to the phone line. I have never had this man on my program before. I am really interested in an excellent article that he had written called The Compassionate Left and the Cold-Hearted Right. Really? Mark Tapson, good morning. How are you? Good morning, dude. I'm great. You know, I read this piece, and uh, quite frankly, I think you did a wonderful job of exposing just really what the left is like. Give us kind of a quick overview of this article, and then we'll take it apart piece by piece. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, I wrote this article for uh, FrontPageMag.com, which is a um, uh, uh, which is part of the David Horowitz Freedom Center, and I wrote it in response to a Huffington Post essay not long ago called I don't know how to explain to you that you should care about other people and uh, it was written by a young woman in New York who was exasperated trying to convince conservatives that that we should have a heart and that we should be compassionate toward the poor and people without health care and that sort of thing and it just it expressed such a uh, common cultural assumption about the right that that we're cold-hearted monsters that I felt it deserved um, a response because it's it's such a common uh, perspective on conservatives in the culture. And uh, having been a being a former Democrat myself, I know that this is how the left perceives us. They perceive themselves as sort of uh, morally superior, and the right as just being uh, cold-hearted at best and evil at worst. All right, now, Mark, what in the world caused you, what came into your personality possession that made you see the light to leave the Democrats? (laughs) Uh, Well, uh, it it can be a long story. I'll give you the short version. My my conversion story went like this. I used to be a Democrat, um, but not a very political one at all, certainly not a radical. I I was what you might call a brain-dead liberal. Um, And... Uh, I began, when I moved out to Los Angeles back in the late 90s, I became involved in the movie biz and went to work as the assistant, the writer's assistant to a, a writer director who happened to be conservative slash libertarian. And uh, we worked on a miniseries together for ABC that was about the, it was called The Path to 9 11. And it was about um, the, the eight years that led from the 1993 World Trade Center bombing all the way up to the attacks on the morning of September 11, 2001. And um, as we worked on this miniseries together, uh, the left got wind of the fact that we were that we were doing this, and they were afraid that we would not portray Bill Clinton in a positive light in terms of his uh, flaccid response to terrorism in those years. And actually, our miniseries was quite apolitical. We weren't; uh, it wasn't about the politics. But the left felt like this would make. Um, them look bad, so they pulled out all the stops to um, to get this miniseries squelched. Senator Harry Reid even went so far as to threaten to pull ABC's license if we aired it. Um, it ultimately did air one time and then <clears throat> has not um, seen the light of day since. Mm. But the point is that um, as part of that project, I had to research the Islamic threat, which I was pretty clueless about. And that opened my eyes enormously. And then seeing how the left responded, seeing the the left's rabid response to this miniseries, even before it aired, made me see that the radical left had become the mainstream left while I wasn't paying attention. And so that uh, steered me toward conservatism, and I became involved with a bunch of Hollywood conservatives, and uh, my conversion progressed from there. 
Well, congratulations and welcome to the flock, my dear friend. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to good be here. All right. Now, Mark, I've got a whole bunch of questions for you, so bear with me. Uh, this is my own feeling, and you can feel free to tell me if I'm right, wrong, or indifferent. But the one thing that I am not hearing ever from the liberal left and the millennials and Democrats is anything to do with personal responsibility. Those are two words I do not ever hear Democrats use. I do not ever hear the millennials or the liberals use personal responsibility. They, to me, want everything handed to them on a silver platter or have access where it's all given to all. Am I wrong? Not at all. Um, you're correct about that, that, about personal responsibility being something that the left uh, is, <laughs> doesn't want to promote because what they want to promote is government solutions to uh, the ills of society. And uh, that's, part of the, that's part of the way in which the left is able to demonize us as uncompassionate, because they say, oh, you know, you don't care about helping other people. You're all just about uh, doing for yourselves. It's all just about uh, the individual and not the collective. And um, they, have, they have government solutions, and we have... Uh, solutions that are more uh, um, personal responsibility based, as you put it. <clears throat> and so it, it's easy for them to portray themselves as feeling and caring and, and to portray us as uh, greedy and in it just for ourselves. Well, wait a minute, though, Mark. How come we let this happen? I know that's kind of a, a far-reaching question, but why did we let this happen? I personally, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn, I'm just stating a fact. And nothing is bragging when it's a fact. I have contributed many, many years and a lot of dollars to various charities. And I am a right-wing conservative. I don't like being lumped into being cold-hearted. I don't like being lumped into being selfish. Why did we let this happen and the liberal left has dictated what we are? There are a couple of reasons for that. One is we're just not as good at messaging as the left is. Uh, they know how to sell themselves, and we're not that good at that. And uh, the other reason is that the left controls the culture. The left controls the news media, they control the entertainment arena, and they control academia. So th they control all of these institutions, these outlets, whereby they can promote their message and push their uh, philosophy, and whereby they can also simultaneously demonize the right as being uh, you know, barely, barely human in terms of our capacity for compassion. So uh, we, we're at a disadvantage in that we, we don't have all these, you know, we, we don't have the advantage of uh, all of these cultural institutions to get our message out. Okay, but Mark... We're not that great at it when we try. I'll give you an example of something we, we did wrong in terms of promoting our philosophy. Remember back when George W. Bush um, talked about compassionate yeah. conservatism? Yeah. That, that uh, label was problematic because it suggested that conservatism itself is not compassionate and that there is a compassionate version of it. Uh, but on the contrary, conservatism is compassionate. I mean, we just have different, more personal, uh, personal responsibility-based solutions than the left does. But that, that's the kind of thing that um, doesn't um, portray us very well. You know, Mark, again, you might not agree with me on this, but little by little, inch by inch, step by step, it sounds like an old Abbott and Costello comedy routine. The left is growing in a cancerous way to the point where socialism is their mantra. Socialism is their, their main decree with the university students, the teachers in those universities. And we saw over the weekend some videos of uh, people asking students on campus well, what is socialism? And these kids had no clue what they were advocating for. It's kind of like, duh, what in the world are we going to do to clean up the educational mess that right now is liberalized all of our higher institutions of learning? Well, that's a, that's a big problem because, um, you know, when I say that the left controls academia, I don't mean just colleges and universities. I'm talking about the entire educational system from pre-K on. And the, the, left, um, the left controls that. So I, I think it's actually hopelessly broken. I think the educational system just needs a complete do-over. 
Um, David Horowitz actually has a, a plan. He and I wrote an article together uh, not long ago in which we put forth his plan to, uh, to uh, install a certain or, or require um, a certain amount of balance and apoliticization of, of the educational system, at least in colleges and universities. So, I mean, that's one step. That's one practical step. But it's going to take a lot of of um, reversing of damage or uh, or even creating parallel opportunities for conservatives like homeschooling for example this is one reason the left doesn't like homeschooling because it uh, takes our youth out of their their grasp <laughs> um, so that's one reason they're they're uh, opposed to school choice and homeschooling but that's but homeschooling is is booming and I homeschool my own children and it's uh, it's a booming industry, thankfully, because uh, that that's one way in which we're going to reverse this educational corruption. Yeah. Mark, one of the things that I'm very concerned about, and it seems like it's getting bigger and looming larger every day, is the tearing apart of the fabric of America, the tearing apart of our social and moral values, the tearing apart of our family values, the tearing apart of our national anthem, our Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know how concerned you are about this, but I see it every day. I hear news stories every day, and I'm really concerned about the next 20 years of what America is going to be. I think all of us conservatives are. Uh, we're very deeply concerned. Everybody, uh, all patriotic Americans are very concerned about this. Uh, there, there's just a rampant un-Americanism or even anti-Americanism that um, it runs throughout our culture. And uh, that gets back to the educational system and Hollywood and the news media all working over uh, the course of decades to to uh, create that that perspective. And it's, it's going to take a, a long war on our part to um, to reverse that uh, i'm very concerned about it i have three daughters um seven and younger and so i'm very concerned about as you put it the next 20 years and beyond that and i think all we can do is just um, is is just work do the do all the work that we can like you are with your show um individually as conservatives and also uh collectively um politically to um push back it's yeah. going to be a long uphill battle but yeah but mark done. mark who are and i don't mean to pin you down on this because i really want your information who are the generals in this war who are the enlisted men in this war sure you mentioned my program and some others but you got to have leadership you got to have a national push and quite frankly i am so frustrated watching and listening and hearing of all these people that want to tear apart the fabric of america that my father my uncles my buddies from high school and college they gave their lives to fight for this country and its constitution i don't want to see it end. what can we do and how do we get organized well, um unfortunately uh, conservatives aren't as good as organizing at uh aren't as good at organizing as the left is that's something we kind of have to work on we, we tend to uh, view ourselves as individuals not as part of a collective so uh, that, that's something we kind of have to, to work on and develop. But I, I think, you know, we've made a major breakthrough with the election of Donald Trump because Trump is a real warrior on our behalf, um, and he's uh, obviously not an establishment Republican, which, which is another whole level of obstruction to trying to uh, uh, recover that, that pro-Americanism that you talked about. Uh, we're all just going to have to be foot soldiers in this, as far as other leaders, you know, hopefully uh, Trump will inspire others uh, like him, um, and um, at least on a political level. <clears throat> and on a cultural level, it's, it's going to take doing battle in the entertainment arena uh, so that Hollywood doesn't control um, all the messaging, all the political messaging. And it's, it's going to take, we talked about before, undoing the damage that's been done in education. Um, I think we're all going to have to be part leader and part foot soldier in this thing, and uh, and uh, hope that uh, Trump gets a second term. Okay, but <laughs> and that other leaders uh, appear 
along the way. Yeah. Let me ask you this, and you mentioned it earlier, and I was going to jump in and make a point, and I did not. But you talked about Islam and the Islamic influence in now our country. I'm very concerned about this, and I can be called a bigot and a hate monger, so be it. Those are words that slide off my back. But I am very, very concerned as to the naivete and, quite frankly, the stupidity of America in letting Islam come in and grow and prosper and make threats and make demands in our society, our culture, and our laws. And I think it's a growing monster that's going to get a lot worse. What are your thoughts? Unfortunately, I agree with you on that. Uh, that's uh, It's obviously extremely worrying and problematic. I mean, all you have to do is look to Europe to see what uh, what's transpiring there, because political correctness, which infects our society, is, is probably even worse over in Europe, and it's resulted in, um, you know, this, this mass migration and uh, kind of out-of-control pockets of, of Islamic extremism throughout Europe and uh, and I think it's just going to get worse because the our our political and media elites are uh, willfully blind to this threat, or either that or they actively promote it. And um, so it's it's a big problem. I think the average citizen gets it, both here and in Europe. I think the average citizen understands what's happening, and they're they're very unhappy about it. But it's our uh, political elites that that. Um, either don't get the threat or they diminish it um it's um it's a, it's a big worry. Well, let me ask you this question real quickly, and, and I'm going to point the finger at both sides of the aisle, the Republicans and the Democrats. I know that many Republicans, including our own uh, representative from this state, Simpson, a couple of years ago I asked him about the growing threat of the Muslim Brotherhood involved in the administration with Obama, and basically he said, oh, come on, don't be a McCarthyist. You know, these people have a right to do this, that, and the other. I see it as a growing threat many people and most people do that study this situation and uh, even our senators and congressmen both sides of the aisle why are they so doggone naive well it's uh, it, it's political correctness to some extent and it's also this this uh, this politically correct belief that we must be tolerant and uh, that tolerance is somehow a major virtue but you know a tolerance of the intolerant is basically suicide. Uh, so, I mean, at some point, you, you've got to uh, look with clear eyes at the threat. I co-wrote a documentary a few years ago with uh, terrorism expert Stephen Emerson um, called uh, Jihad in America, The Grand Deception. And uh, it might be worth checking out because it's, it's basically about the growth of the Muslim Brotherhood in the United States. Uh, so it's, it's definitely a, a serious threat. And... Um, our politicians, we, we need to have politicians who are brave enough to stand up to uh, organizations like CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, which is a Muslim Brotherhood legacy group. Uh, and it's going to take politicians who aren't afraid to call them out on this kind of thing. You know, where we are today, though, Mark, and you're an excellent writer, this piece is one that I'm going to save in my archives and have you back on the program. But where we are in America today with the anti-Trump protesters and the Democrats doing nothing but being knuckle-draggers in the sand, they won't do anything, their main policy platform is to resist. Boy, that's a winner. I mean, where are we on a 1 to 10 scale? I mean, I don't see things too good in the future do you i am i am cautiously optimistic as the politicians say and the reason is we we sort of have the momentum now thanks to trump uh and the left feels this also the left as you can see is becoming more desperate and angrier and more violent they're they're basically flailing about because they realize that they, that uh, the tables have been turned to a certain extent and that we sort of have the momentum, not only politically, but even culturally. We're, we're, uh, uh, we're sort of, we're conducting, I mean, we long ago lost the culture war, and we're at a point now where we're waging a cultural insurgency, but that's working. Uh, I think it's starting to uh, turn the tide a little bit, and the left is freaking out about it. So I'm optimistic as long as conservatives don't blow it. I'm optimistic that, um, that if we just keep this momentum going, 
uh, then we can maybe restore some sense of sanity and patriotism to the country. I hope you're right. Mark Tapson, a very interesting guest, great writer, and at the David Horowitz Freedom Center. I'm going to ask you a favor. Please come back in the future. You're excellent, and I want to have more comments. Thank you. Anytime. All right, sir. Thank you. Very interesting individual, and I'm glad I had him on the air, Mark Tapson, with his uh, great piece that he had written. And uh, I'm glad that he shifted, saw the light, and left the Democrats and became a conservative. Whew. Thank you. Uh, let's see what's going Oh, I get a chance right now to tell you what's going on over at Oakley for Pioneer Days. You know, last Friday and Saturday night they had the bump and rub car race. I heard it was fantastic. Well, I want to remind you about some of the great businesses over there that urge you to come to Oakley for Pioneer Days. Like Searles at 106 North Center Street in Oakley. Gas, grub, and goodies. The store opens early in the morning at 6 in the morning till 9 p.m. Oh, they've got great burgers and fries, and they've got their specialty buns that are break fresh every day. Not break, but baked without an R. There you go. And boy, I'm telling you, great food and nice people at Searles 106 North Center Street in Oakley. Along with Scott Bedke, Speaker of the House Representative Scott Bedke, rancher in Oakley, invites every everybody to come on over to Oakley this week for the Oakley Pioneer Days. And uh, believe me, a great celebration over 130 years of family Western traditions. Thank you, Speaker of the House Scott Bedke. And Smith's Cafe at 135 East Main in Oakley. Open Monday through Saturday, 6.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Saturday, uh, Sundays until 11. And boy, they make their own great big patties for the one-third burger and the onion rings to die for. Oh, that sounds good right now. All of the food, really good at Smith's Cafe, 135 East Main in Oakley. Now, Oakley Pioneer Days is really off and running. I'll tell you what, uh, tomorrow night they got a big team roping starting at 6.30 with sign-up, rope at 7, Thursday night at Jim Canna, Friday and Saturday night, open rodeo, co-sanctioned with the IMPRA, and then fireworks and then dancing. And then uh, through the weekend, my goodness, volleyball and basketball tournaments and uh, Goose Creek runoff. And then on Saturday, don't forget the great big Oakley Pioneer Days parade at 11.30 on Saturday. Saturday morning. Oh my goodness, it's ripping good fun. Their Pioneer Heritage, past, present, and future. Oakley Pioneer Days. Don't you miss it. Wow, they do have a good time up there. We are going to take a little break and send it back over to Old Wheels at our home station and then come back in a couple of minutes where we try to restore the pride in the greatest country in the world. America. Wheels, take it away. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Oh my goodness sakes, I am so honored and really excited to have a good friend of this program uh, that I understand was uh, under the weather for a time and now doing much better. And we say good morning to Dr. Gerard. Gerard Lomero, good morning, sir. How are you? I am doing great. How are you doing? Well, don't worry about me, but I feel so embarrassed that I did not know that you were, uh, like I said a moment ago, feeling under the weather and had to have surgery, and I certainly hope all is going well for you. It seems to be. Yeah, they, um, uh, something came up suddenly. It turned out I had a tumor on my right kidney. And they and the kidney was about the size of an orange. Oh and they my. had to remove it because it was causing trouble. And uh, they had to take the right kidney, which was perfectly working fine, but they had to take it out because the two were attached too closely together. And they took them both out, and uh, the surgery went well, and they were surprised at how quickly I recovered. Well, I want you to know that after hearing that you were uh, down and uh, recuperating, uh, our prayers were with you and your family, and I hope again all is well. All is well, and you know, I think all the prayers from all the listeners and hosts and others around the country 
probably the reason I got better quicker than anybody expected. Well, I am holding in my hand, as a matter of fact, the autographed copy of the book that you sent to me, Great News for America. And I'm excited about what's going on with Trump and this administration. I'm excited about the stock market. I'm excited about national security. But then i got to tell you something, doctor, and I don't mean to sound negative, but I am absolutely scared, scared of what the left is doing, what the left is not doing. They're dragging their knuckles through the sand to slow everything down. They're not helping at all. Deb, and you're a great American, and I'm going to give you some great news. You do not have to worry. Their efforts are going to fail. They're going to fall flat on their face. The American people will win out. They have won out over the last 240 years. Anytime a political party uh, got in their way, the political party is the one that lost the battle, and it's going to happen again. And we're going through the pains of going from the anti-constitutional era when people try to ignore the Constitution to the new conservative era that's in the process of happening. That's what I wrote about in that book. And it's continuing to happen. And it may look like they're getting in the way. There are roadblocks, including some roadblocks in the Republican Party. But all those roadblocks are going to fail, and the American people are going to win, and you are going to see renewed... Uh, interest in and following of the U.S. Constitution. You know, everything that you say, I really, I sit here and I smile, and I embellish everything you say, and I'm going, wow, that's great. You were right on the election, whereas many, many and most had no clue. So I have a lot of respect for your opinion. But I must say that the Democrats and the liberals are turning over every rock trying to find something dirty or negative about this administration and literally they have caused seven months of delay even on all the appointments that are necessary for this administration your thoughts on this well i think you're right they're trying to do everything they can because they're like the last gasping breath of somebody that's uh unfortunately uh leaving the scene and they are in that situation they are a dying party these people have decided to go against the will of the American people, which is a dangerous thing to do if you're a political party, because you don't get votes. They lost during the Obama administration up to, depending on whose count you believe, 1,500 seats. We're talking governors, House, Senate. <clears throat> now they've lost the White House. They've lost all sorts of jobs from the county courthouse up to the White House. And they continue to die because they refuse to change their point of view on policies where the American people don't agree with them. So they are trying every desperate thing and try to find some scandal, anything that will stop the conservative error from happening. And you know what? They're all failing. It's not working. Nobody's listening. People don't care about Russian collusion. There was no Russian collusion. And so it, it, it may look like they're slowing things up, and they probably are slowing them up a bit, but they can't get in the way of a long-term American trend. America is going to win this battle with the media, with the Democratic Party, and the Democratic Party, I think, pretty soon is going to be historical because it's not going to be around. You know, Dr. Lomero, one of the most disgusting personalities on the liberal left with the Democrats is Maxine Waters from California. And she has come out, and all the filth and the sleaze and the name-calling and the anti-Trump and saying, we've got to impeach him now, and how about uh, the Trump family is a crime? laden family I have never seen anything so disgusting as her I thought Harry Reid was bad but I gotta hand it to Maxine Waters she takes the cake well I think she really is quite a character that's for sure she definitely has her point of view and it uh, doesn't line up with virtually anybody else <laughs> you know but I'll tell you this it's, it's hard to take them seriously because there's utterly nothing that Trump has done 
uh, except send out tweets, which is not unconstitutional because that's his choice, his way he wants to communicate with the American people because he doesn't think he'll get his message through the media. So I would say uh, her stuff is just like a lot of other Democrats. They're delusional. And there's nothing there. There's nothing to impeach him about. There's no collusion. And by the way, collusion with another country is not a crime. I mean, we know about Ted Kennedy going to Russia, trying to influence the American election back That's in right. Ronald Reagan's day. And we know about uh, Clinton and the Ukraine. That's apparently been documented adequately. Uh, you know, even if they did collude, which they didn't, and there was no information given from what we know, um, it's not a crime. So it's not unconstitutional, and you can't impeach somebody for it. Yeah. You know, one of the things and items that I think of many Americans that listen to my program and myself included are I'm very concerned about. And I think it's been an acceptance by the Democratic Party and that is of Islam and what they're trying to do and grow in this country. I am extremely concerned about the naivete and the acceptance of Islam, Sharia law and uh the the poor baby attitude to Islam in general. I think we have a cancer growing in this country that the Democrats can't see. Am I wrong? Well, I actually think they can see it. I don't think they're doing this uh, out of naivete. Uh, they might be. Some of them might be. But I think they're aware of it. I think they've teamed up with Islam because their goal is common, and that is to end uh, freedom free markets, and the, our system. I think they're both against our system, basically. I wrote an article months ago about why are the Democrats being undemocratic. You know, their name is Dem Democratic, and they should be in favor of democracy, but they want to ignore the results of the presidential election. They want to ignore any results of any election that doesn't agree with them. And I think siding with uh, the, the radical Islamic side of things is just another way of being against America. But you know what? Americans are for America. And they believe in freedom. They believe in morality. They believe in the Constitution. They believe in the rule of law. And they also believe in having borders that are honored. Absolutely. So it may take a while uh, to get all this stuff straightened out. It, you know, it, it took years to get in this bad situation. It'll take years to get fully out of it. But out of it, we are going. Dr. Lomero, one of the issues, and I am one of those doubting Thomases that doesn't believe that the government should be the wherewithal and the catch-all for health care. Uh, personally, I think a lot of it has to go back to personal responsibility and paying for what you get. That's simply put. What about the health care with this new plan that the Republicans are pushing for? Will it be kind of a monster in the closet, or is it going to work? Well, I'll tell you, uh, the Republicans have made it clear in candidate after candidate after candidate, campaign after campaign after campaign, that they were sent to Washington to repeal and replace Obamacare. If they fail to do that in the House and the Senate, if they fail to fully replace, repeal and replace, uh, they're ceding the, 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 you know, ceding the, uh, the fact that there's going to be a new party. And I'll tell you, it's very simple. One of two things is going to happen. Either they're going to get their act together and do what they promised to do, or the American people are going to say, hey, enough of this stuff. We're sick of it. And what they're going to do is they're going to create a new party. And I'll, I'll say right now on your show that if they don't get their act together and repeal this, this has been going on since 2010. And they, they, they gave the, the Republican Party the House, then they gave the Republican Party the Senate in 2014, then the, the White House in 2016. They've got to get it done or there's going to be a new party. Right now, the Democratic Party is all but dead. It's just about gone. Okay, they're, they're not even a force in American politics for almost every state, just a couple of cities, you know, that they run. And the Republican Party is about half conservative and about half establishment and the conservative folks are trying to win that battle in the house and the senate and they may and i hope they do and, and they may challenge a lot of republicans in 2018 but if the conservatives fail to do it 
I think they're going to withdraw and start a new party, and that will become the majority party. Because the establishment Republican Party is not what the American people want. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dr. Lomero, one of the issues that I'm really concerned about, and I want you to highlight this a little bit more. We mentioned it earlier. The youth in this country today, and I'm not pointing my finger at all the youth, I am aiming at many of the millennials that absolutely want to see an overthrow of the American government. They have no respect for our flag, our national anthem our Pledge of Allegiance, anything American, and they lean towards everything's got to be socialistic. We want socialism. And then when they're asked what socialism is, they can't come up with an answer. How concerned are you about the next generation coming up in the United States? Well, I think we, we have a right to be concerned, and I think we need to work hard to fix it. Basically, you have these progressive socialists who have gotten into the school system, and we're talking not just K through 12, we're talking colleges, universities. I mean, at universities, if you're a conservative, you're not supposed to speak. You're supposed to hide. You're supposed to hide your views, and you're supposed to run and be fearful, and some people may put on black suits and go burn down buildings because you want to speak. Well, we need to fix that, okay? I mean, trustees of universities... Uh, need to fire presidents that don't allow free speech. Uh, donors and alumni need to donate according to uh, universities that believe in free speech. So we have to work on the educational system. Now, to your bigger question, what about the, the kids who've been educated this way? Well, I'll tell you what. A lot of them are going to wake up and find out that it's hard to get a job in a socialist economy, and they're going to change their heart when, when it comes to the pocketbook. You know, they're going to see that under Donald Trump, and I believe this to be true, and under other conservatives and conservative policies, the country is going to be a whole lot better off economically. We're going to go to a much bigger GDP once the tax cuts are passed, and I think they will be passed. And I think that the pocketbook issues is what's going to ultimately drive people. When you're in college... You can rant and rave about anything, but when it comes to getting a job, having a paycheck, paying taxes, and living your life the way you want to live it, guess what? You need to have a good job, and you need to work hard, and that's how you learn the American system. Real quick, Dr. Lomero, in the time remaining on this segment, what are some of the bright spots that made you smile so far in the first seven months of this presidency? Well, I'll tell you, the Supreme Court, uh, we have a rock-solid constitutional rule of law conservative on the Supreme Court. We now have a working majority of conservatives, and I'll tell you, there's another two or three uh, that look like they may resign in the very near future. When they resign, we are going to have a supermajority conservative Supreme Court, and you want to say anything or do anything, uh, you're going to see an incredible conservative trend in the U.S. when the Supreme Court switches and, and switches the results of a lot of these uh, extremist left-wing judges, uh, especially in the Ninth Circuit, I might add. They're, they're known for their funny judgments. But a uh, solid majority in the Supreme Court is a big deal. I absolutely am so glad to have you on the program. I'm so glad you're doing well uh, health-wise. Please come back in the future. A dear friend, writer of the book called Great News for America, Dr. Gerard Lomero. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zeb. And I want to wish all my uh, listeners out there a uh, thanks for all the letters, cards, uh, email you sent. God bless you, sir. Come back soon. Thank you so much. God bless you. All right. There is a great gentleman, and uh, I'm so glad to hear that his surgery was successful and he's on the mend, Dr. Gerard Lamero, with his book, Great News for America. Nice, nice man. Uh, time for the weather, and the weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome. Oh, my goodness, the number to call, 324-7657. Or you can go to their website, too, scarrowmeats.com. And all their retail meats, delicious. Oh, my goodness, the breakfast sausages, the bratwurst. And they've got a new product called the Buckboard Bacon. It's a little bit leaner and more economical than traditional bacon. Several flavors. Oh, it 
is good. All the meats are at Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road in Jerome. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. Well, it's time for us to saddle up and ride again for another work week. And as far as weather is concerned, this is what we can expect. It's going to be nice for today. Sunny skies, a little bit on the breezy side, nothing that we're not used to. Winds out of the west, 10 to 15 miles an hour. High of 89 for today. Sunset for tonight is going to be right around 9.09. Clear skies for this evening, low of 54. Tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 93 with an overnight low of 56. And expect the same as we hit midweek on Wednesday, sunny and 93. That is your weather for uh, she does a great job. Gina, thank you very much. And the weather brought to you by Don Scarrow and the crew at Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome. Again, that telephone number, 324-7657. They are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. Mm-mm. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. As you know, over the last couple of weeks, I've been telling you about the Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame, going to have their great big weekend on July 28th and 29th. And we want to thank our major sponsor, D. L. Evans Banks. All those great folks are major sponsor this year for the Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame induction ceremony, along with also Coors Tech Dis- Distributing. Thank you so much for all your help. Here's what's going to happen. On July 28th, Friday night, the 28th, we're going to have the Tough Enough to Wear Paint Night. A percentage of the proceeds goes to Breast Cancer Awareness at St. Luke's Foundation. It's a $10 entry fee. We have got a ton of door prizes and fun that night, and that's right there at the Canyon Crest Event Center. For tickets, contact Katie at 733-9392. Then the next night, on the 29th, Saturday night, the 29th of July. We're going to have the Hall of Fame induction at 5 p.m. social hour, dinner at 6, and then the induction ceremony. And people like Dean Oliver are going to be inducted this year. It's just going to be a phenomenal evening, and we urge you to attend. Again, our thank yous to our major sponsor, DL Evans Banks, the Idaho Rodeo Hall of Fame, July 28th and 29th at the Canyon Crest Events Center. Again, please contact Tag Katie for tickets at 733-9392. Oh, boy, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Let's see. Tomorrow on the program... Let me take a look at some of the guests that we have lined up. We're going to have uh, Oakley Pioneer Days on. They're going to be talking about all the fun up there this week. Then we're going to have Lydon Crane on the air, and he's going to be talking about taxation and different problems to worry about uh, with taxes. Dr. History is going to be on the program tomorrow at 10.06. And then we're going to talk to Terry Rowe at uh, St. Luke's Foundation. We're going to be talking about breast cancer awareness and all the new testing devices, and uh, all of the information from St. Luke's Foundation. So that should be really interesting on tomorrow. While I'm waiting for your call, I want to remind you, too, about our major sponsor, and that's your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Woo! All seven locations. My goodness, when you're in there, you might ask them about a free pre-trip safety check. That's right, a visual inspection of your tires, checking the air pressure and wheel alignment for tire wear, front end components to make sure everything's nice and tight, brake components to make sure when you say, whoa, you're going to whoa, shocks and struts, battery, including a load test, all of this for a safe trip wherever you're going this summer. And, of course, all the tires. All the tires for your pickups and SUVs and your cars. These folks really know about tireology. Man, all the tread designs, they can help you for your type of driving conditions. So stop in today and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. You stop in and see them today. Wheels, did you have a good weekend? I haven't had a chance to visit with you at all today. Um, Actually, I had a fairly decent weekend. I, I thought it was going to actually rain this weekend, but surprisingly it didn't. Well, it got really cloudy. It got really windy on Saturday, and I thought we were going to get a real gully washer, and nothing happened. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. I we had just gotten a, a new pool and everything for outside. And I you got a brand out. new pool? I I did. I've I've tested it out quite a bit. Let's say it's already have, been. Have you got a high dive? No, I I really wish I had a high dive though. I mean, those are always exciting. You know, when you go to how deep a uh, how deep a pool do you have? Um, I'd say it's anywhere between maybe sixteen to twenty feet deep. Yeah. Holy buckets! You're gonna have a whole bunch of new friends. Yeah, it, it, it's a tall pool, but I. As much as I love the high dive, I don't know if I would trust that pool as far as the high dive goes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Well, be but, careful, be careful, be careful, but enjoy. we got a lot of hot days coming up, too, so get in the water and just relax, okay? Well, do. All uh, right. Let me flip that on you. How was your weekend? It was nice. It was warm. I drank a lot of iced tea and just kind of vegetated, but we had a good time, real good time. <laughs> All right, buddy. Hey, listen, i got to tell everybody that we're going to be back here again tomorrow morning at 8.06 for the Tuesday edition of Zeb at the Ranch. And always, we restore the pride in the greatest country in the world, America, on this program. Tune in tomorrow morning at 8.06 right here on KBAR, 12.30 a.m. And then, for those of you outside of this area, uh, you can pick it up on the Internet, ZebBell.com, and you can watch it, too. I've got webcams here in the studio. So all of this and we'll be back tomorrow morning with more conservative thought for America until tomorrow on behalf of wheels old Zeb Bell saying the way things were are the way things ought to be